When molecules, such as proteins, need to be separated from a mixture, a chromatography column may be used. Here, we will demonstrate the use of a size exclusion column. To begin, the column should be rinsed with water to ensure that it will flow out of the bottom filter. You may need to use a bulb to start the flow, or you could simply place your palm over the top and push down. The next step is to attach the valve by screwing it to the bottom of the column. After the water has flowed out, you can close the valve and attach the column to the stand. You are now ready to pour the column. Because we wetted the column with water, we will rinse it with some of the same buffer used for the mobile phase of the experiment. This is passed through, and now we are ready to pour the gel. As the gel settles in the buffer, it must be mixed to create a slurry, but you must be careful not to introduce air bubbles or damage the gel beads as they could negatively affect the experiment. Keep tilting the bottle back and forth until there is no gel stuck to the bottom of the tube. It can now be poured in one continuous motion into the column. To pack the column, open the stopcock and allow the buffer to start flowing out. The gel should settle faster than the liquid flows out, and you will see it start to separate at the top of the column. Stop the column before the buffer reaches the top of the gel bed, and add some additional buffer to the top to pack the gel further. To add buffer, while being careful not to disturb the gel, use a pipette to pour it down the side of the column. Once this additional buffer has flowed through and the meniscus has reached the top of the gel bed, close the stopcock as the column is ready to be loaded. When the experiment is proceeding, we will be collecting a series of fractions, each of the same volume. The task can be made easier by measuring a volume into one tube and using that height to mark off several additional tubes so they are ready to be used during the experiment. In this experiment, one milliliter of a sample containing a mixture of differently sized dyes is loaded into the column. Make sure that there is no buffer above the gel bed or this will dilute the sample. After carefully pipetting the sample into the column, you will open the stopcock and allow all the sample to enter the gel. At the same time, all the eluate should be collected for the remainder of the experiment. When the sample reaches the gel bed, close the stopcock again and add a layer of buffer above the gel bed to carry the sample through the column. The column can now be used in a continuous fashion until the samples are all collected by adding new buffer to the top as samples are collected from the bottom. As the experiment runs, you will not see any separation of proteins, but this demonstration using dyes clearly shows the blue dye has a faster mobility and thus larger size than the red dye. While the elution can be time consuming, keep an eye on your column to make sure that it has not stalled. If it does stall, the column will not complete elution before the end of the lab period. Some common mistakes we have observed are not mixing the gel beads completely. This leads to some remaining in the bottle and results in a short column that will not separate proteins properly. Pouring buffer directly into the column, which will lift and mix the gel beads. and failing to maintain the buffer level can result in the column drying out and cracking.